I'm Max Abramson, and I'm the Libertarian candidate for governor. I'm a state representative, Libertarian state representative, and I'm also the Libertarian candidate for governor. Uh, I believe that we need to get money, power, and decision making out of Concord and get it back down to the local level and back to the people. In fact, until roughly the 1990s, that's the way things worked in this state. And as a country, we had always stuck with a very small, constitutionally limited government at least until the 1950s and 60s. And we took care of problems at the local level because it was more practical to do things that way. Uh, I believe that people have the right to live their life as they see fit as long as they're not harming anyone else. I believe that as 60% of New Hampshire voters have said time and again that we need to legalize marijuana. In fact, 72% of New Hampshireites have said that we need to decriminalize marijuana, uh, cannabis, and Every other New England state has already decriminalized at least half an ounce of cannabis. There's absolutely no reason why we should be wasting state resources on these nanny state policies where the state puts people in prison to try to protect you from hurting yourself. In fact, I believe that state government should be as small as possible, it should be as decentralized as possible, and that it should do its job at the lowest possible cost to the taxpayer uh, and get out of our bedroom, get out of our lives, and get out of schools, health care, our own business, our own retirement, and not try to spend its time protecting us from hurting ourselves or telling us how to live our lives. In the legislature over the last two years, we've done a number of things. We uh, put through several uh, energy bills that were intended to save you money on electricity rates. Uh, we did increase the net metering rates from 50 megawatt hours per day to 100 megawatt hours per day. And we did that in order to improve self-reliance and help people who are trying to do things off the grid. Um, but we also made changes to the renewable portfolio standard and to REGI and uh, made other changes with Senate Bill 170 and Senate Bill 1, uh, 221 that were intended to uh, reduce electricity rates a little bit. Um, it, it, it's not a large reduction, but a few dollars here, a few dollars there. Remember all those overhead expenses for electricity, fuel, uh, maintenance costs, contracting costs. Those things also drive up costs for towns. They drive up costs for uh, schools. They drive up costs for the county and even for the jails and other public institutions. And those things get passed on in the form of higher property taxes. So we've tried to go through and, look and do what thousands of elected and appointed libertarians have done all over the country. Uh, working in budget committees, state legislatures, school boards, and whatnot. Try to find ways that we can do things more efficiently. Not push some great big left-wing or right-wing uh, ideological agenda. We just go through budgets and try and figure out how we can save money on fuel, on fuel idling, on health care costs, and dealing with the pension crisis, the $4 billion unfunded pension liability. We did a number of things. Um, like strengthening requirements for parents to be notified if there's sexually explicit material that's going to be in the sex ed courses so that parents have two weeks notice. Unfortunately that bill was vetoed by the governor and uh, was killed in the house. Um, uh, we were not able to sustain enough votes to, uh, to, to override the governor's veto. Um, we did increase funding for both our community to college system and the university system in order to maintain steady tuition rates and try to keep college affordable. Uh, we phased out a cap on adequate education grants and adjusted the, uh, the education stabilization fund. We did that and it, it, it only, again, it only saves you about nine or ten dollars a month on your property taxes on average throughout the state. But a little bit here, a little bit there, eventually you're talking real money. We did a lot of other things allowing towns to provide property tax exemptions from charter schools. And we increased state funding for charter schools to about $6,400 a year. That sounds like a big increase of almost $1,000 a year per student. But actually it was meant not just to save taxpayers money. That also saves taxpayers money because about 40% of the charter schools um, deal with disadvantaged kids. And some of those kids would end up in thirty dollars to $60,000 a year. Uh, special ed programs that don't suit those kids very well. So charter schools are usually a better deal. I believe you have the right to send your child to any public, private, or charter school you want to. And as governor, I'll work with the legislature to make that happen.